They had to go in a lot of different directions last night, unfortunately, because of illness and travel issues. Hurricane Idalia caused Kenny Omega to miss the show because he was not able to get a flight out of Florida. And for anybody that wants to break nasty on anything like that, I mean, these guys got back into town on Monday, many of them, and then had to turn around and, and leave on Tuesday. They didn't have a chance to change their flights in many cases. Unfortunately, in the case of Soraya and Swerve Strickland, they are ill. How ill are they? We don't know. We do have an announced match for Collision that features the Outsiders against Britt Baker, Karu Shida, and Chris Statlander. The but look outcasts. at Keith Bryan. Yeah, well, the the outside. What did I say? The Outsiders. Yeah. Okay. Hey, listen. If it's the Outsiders against those three, <laughs> that's one hell of a matchup. Well, look, Kevin Nash, they may have to put him in place of Soraya because, let's be honest, I mean, we see how snotty, you know, heard how snotty Brian is right now. We know what he's suffering through. Maybe it's just a minor thing, but, you know, is she going to be okay to go on Saturday, let alone on Sunday, if they want to add a match between her and Britt Baker? Is that an official statement by you? You're expecting Kevin Nash to be <laughs> not, don't, do not Do not Soraya report that, no. In this? Do not, I would, I would is enjoy he allowed it. there? I don't know. I, I mean, think he, he had might some choice better words in the ring than she does. He had some choice words for CM Punk back in the day. Well, that's... <laughs> right. Maybe they could share uh, an ice cream bar and just, like, talk things out or something like that, you know? Maybe. I, well, no? yeah, I don't know that they really had an issue. Or if it was just the <laughs> the promos <laughs> some, on screen. That it's it's just like hip-hop pretty... stuff? Is that what it is? It's yeah, just that rap a little bit stuff? of beef. <laughs> it's hip hop bro everything's good it's just working here hey john moxley had to work last night he had to open the show i don't know if he was supposed to take time off or not is this, but is this guy ever gonna get a vacation <laughs> it's been over a year now i don't feel he bad still hasn't for him. gotten that vacation well he had a, a self uh inflicted vacation that he put himself on he's had that poor renee that's the one i feel bad about she's out there she was on 37 segments on last week's show that woman is everywhere she needs some time off forget about his vacation what about hers she, she got two shoes launched at her by tony storm <laughs> She's just trying to do her job. She was an innocent bystander interviewing Tony Storm, who, by the way, might be the best character in professional oh, wrestling right now. I she love is her. just off the charts amazing in this, uh, I guess, 50s confused, diva, movie diva. Starlet. Yes. Her Studio disgraced, A disgraced starlet role. She is just awesome. Uh, she can't trust the other outcasts she can't trust her own shoes no so she launched them at renee who was just perplexed the entire time who's ddp's daughter's name lexi the gimmick where I, she'll like appear lexi with lexi mcnair i believe something like that where she where she and she has no idea who she is from week to week she thinks she's a new person trying to interview her and it will always end with a shoe being thrown in her head it is Fantastic. I don't know if the genesis of this was from Tony Storm getting the role of June Byers for the um, Mildred Burke movie that's going to be coming out. But like whoever had the idea, whoever it was, the genesis of it, it was brilliant because she really does look the part with the blonde hair that's done up like that. And she can pull off, again, this whole routine of being this. Again, on her way out or, or you know, disgrace, like you said, you know, studio mo movie star from the olden days. Can you imagine what the house must be like if her and Juice Robinson are going over their promos Dude. together? Let me... The absolute insanity Let that, me that must a... occur and exist oh my in that God, household. It's... It's, it's an, I used to wonder about that when it came to their squatting routines because they both have some of the most impressive thighs. Got to balance it for the men and the women here. An incredible set of thighs on both of those people. If you had to put money on a futures bet, we're doing a loin fruit futures bet here, okay? Keeping with the theme of how is I it, started this show. Yeah, is it at Circa or South Point? MGM. You get this, oh, at, okay. get this at the MGM, okay? You you can either choose between Charlotte and Andrade, Juice Robinson and Tony Storm, or let's see who would be another perfect. Uh, are, isn't ahead. it? Are are Charlotte and Andrade together? Yes. Oh. You did not know this? No. 
All right, those two are Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. You got to pick loin fruit for the future. Who's going to be the best athlete out of those three? Oh, it's easy. Who? I think it's Tony Storm and Juice. That's who I'm picking. That's who I'm picking. That's who, know, that's Seth, who my Seth Rollins is a pretty damn good athlete. Yeah, well, yeah. Look, now Becky I Lynch. About it. I mean, overcoming what she's gone through in her career. I remember she was not going to be well, able to wrestle again years ago. <laughs> yeah, Tony Storm has the most violent move in professional wrestling, where she runs full speed and throws her butt into her opponent's face. So to develop that sort of acceleration and to be able to throw herself her hips with such force. She's a, a great athlete in my estimation. Got that first step quickness. Take you out of the box if you yeah. try to drive down the lane. You Type like two that. muscle fibers. <laughs> Tony Storm's interview was great. John Moxley defeated Commander. He said it that at the beginning. Then Chris Jericho. Sammy Guevara went face to face. They got very, very chippy with each other. Hard to believe that it's not going to end with the two of them going at it at some point. They decided to end the segment without any violence or anything like that. We then got Eddie Kingston defeating Wheeler Yuta to retain the NJPW Strong Openweight Championship, a title that has not looked good on anybody since Filthy lost it. We then got story time with Adam Cole, where he was interrupted by Roderick Strong and his neck brace and the kingdom who all ran down on Adam Cole, talking bad about him, bringing up stuff from the ROH days and talking about how he abandoned them and then said Roderick Strong was being selfish, talked about MJF's neck and Roddy got all freaked out and was really upset with Adam, uh, taking more care about somebody else's neck than his own. But look, I'm sorry. This still feels like to me, even though I think last night was more proof that Roddy Strong should not be holding a microphone for an extended period of time. Keep Cole and MJF on the baby face side. Find a talker. Find somebody and put them with that group with Taven and Bennett, who I was surprised were not involved in the Battle Royal last night. And I wonder, speculating, if that's going to be a thing. You would think it has to lead to Taven and Bennett against MJF and Adam Cole and probably being the ones to defeat them, I, I would imagine at this point, uh, for those belts. Although maybe they just get defeated. Maybe Roderick Strong gets wasted by somebody during this tournament and we get no resolution to it all. But I would, I would imagine that we're heading towards at least a, a feud, if not a pay-per-view, in the lead up to one uh, with all, well, with all five of these guys. DJ Convoy in the chat. Uh, Roddy, I've gone from hating Roddy's high school acting to loving it with a goofball. The charm in it is he can't act, and I think he knows he can't act. You know, it's, he's trying his best, but there's a, there is an amusement in it. The show did ultimately end with Orange Cassidy defeating Penta El Zero Miedo in a ruckus laden brawl of a match in which Cassidy had to pull out a miracle once again to survive after getting beaten down by Penta. He was then able to roll him up uh, with a quick crucifix and get the victory and then cut a pretty damn impressive promo for Orange Cassidy to close the show. Get Tom's thoughts on that as we close our own show coming back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Hey, there's that old WWF superstars of wrestling music. Jesse the Body Ventura here with Vince McMahon. No Bruno San Martino with a headpiece on. One of the worst wigs of all time, Bruno San Martino's. Had to be. But that doesn't matter because he is a legend the same way our friend Filthy Tom Lawler is a legend for jumping on this show and saving it today the same way that Orange Cassidy had to help save the show yesterday and cuts a pretty impassioned promo to end the show. I was surprised by that. I thought it was going to be a short one. No, he actually sat down in the ring, cut one hell of a promo. I think for those people that don't like him, it did nothing to make them like him. They'll say, I don't care about this match, whatever. I think for AEW fans, and I think for average people maybe just tuning in, average wrestling fans, I don't know. I think it probably worked for them pretty damn well. Yeah, I thought his promo was great. I believe we got the birth of a catchphrase for Orange Cassidy when he said, I'm Orange Cassidy and I do not have a catchphrase, which was about the most 
clever catchphrase you could come up with. That's the best one since no gimmicks needed. Chris Candido. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.